Hello everyone, welcome to another Honkai Star Rail video, and this is the official number one on YouTube best relic and uh, planner orb set tier list, right? So, I mean, let's just waste no time at all. Let's get straight into it. We're starting with the Band of Sizzling Thunder. Um, this increases lightning damage by 10% as the two piece and the four piece is when the wearer uses their skill, increase their wearer's attack by 20% for one turn. Now, um, this is actually a pretty decent four-piece set, uh, when it, you know, once you have all four pieces. Obviously good for lightning characters, but there's a problem. Um, yes, this is a pretty decent four-piece for Jing Yuan. This is a pretty decent um, four-piece for, I mean, really anybody. It's just generally decent, increasing attack by 20% after you use a skill. The problem is that there are better options on pretty much every character in this category. Uh, if you're going for Kafka, obviously you want the damage over time set. If you're going for Jing Yuan, you probably want the follow up set. Uh, it's just, it, it's, it's kind of a problem, right? And those are some of the best, you know, those are like the best DPSs in the, the element. So I would say, you know, it, it's decent value because it's a decent four piece, but Relic sets that have come out since this is release um, really outdo it. So I'm actually going to put it in meh value for now. Now let's go to the physical set. This is going to be the Champion of Streetwise boxing set. This increases physical damage by 10%. And after the wear, for the four piece, after the wear attacks or is hit, their attack increases by 5% for the rest of the battle. Now this is really good because Clara has counter attacks. Um, this is obviously this is really good for Clara, and this is also pretty decent for Shu Shang, uh, because you know she's hunt, so you're you're going hunt at least in simulated universe, and you're getting a few turns, so you're stacking this up. But that's like that's really niche. Um, overall, I think this the best physical character that this you know that this works on is probably Clara. The four piece just synergizes with her really well and it's physical, of course. The problem with that is that Clara's uh, counter attacks is kind of what her whole character revolves around and those attacks are follow up attacks. There is just a set in the game now that is better for follow up attacks. That That is the unfortunate reality of it. So I'm going to put this in meh value too. I would really only build this on like one or two of the characters in the game and that would be, you know, before uh, they got kind of power crept. Um, I actually think that the lightning one, the four piece is just better general value. Um, the, the, the four piece on here is kind of specific. Like you kind of want to be getting hit too while you're also attacking. Um, and like what situation are you trying to do that in? Except for Clara who kind of, you know, puts a taunt on herself and, you know, gets her attacked more often. She's really the only one that can take advantage of it. Let's go to the wind set. This is by many people, I would say, probably one of the worst sets in the game, right? Uh, this is increased wind damage by 10%. Four pieces after the wearer uses their ultimate, their action is advanced forward by 25%. This is a really, really weak advance forward. It's an advance forward, which is nice, but it's very weak. And I mean, like, there's just, there's so many problems with this, right? This is, who would you build this on? Who do you want to advance forward um, your turn to? Uh, let's, I mean, let's just look at some of the wind characters in the game. Um, I think the best way to do that, actually, is probably to F11 here so I can open it up. Um, the character spreadsheet, of course. Uh, so, for wind characters, like, I mean, Don Hung, who's using Don Hung anymore, right? Let's be honest. Um, Huo Ho, you're not using the set on Huo Ho. You're not using the set on Bronya. You're definitely not using it on Black Swan, not Sampo, and you're definitely not using it on Blade. So, this set is arguably the worst set in the entire game. I actually don't know if there is a big argument for that. Um, there's really only like one or two that can probably... Really only one, actually, in my opinion, that can probably you know, be put in at the same level of lowness that this is. Uh, maybe one in the entire game that's actually lower, but we'll, we'll have to see. We'll have to see what, I, what, what we think whenever we, 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 whenever we read it. 
Uh, for the fire one, this is the Fire Smith of Lava Forging. This is the uh, the fire set. Increases fire damage by 10% for the two piece. And for the four piece, it increases the wearer's skill damage by 12%. After unleashing their ultimate, increases the wearer's fire damage by 12% for the next attack. So this is not bad, guys. Think about think about the characters that you're going to use this on. Yes, um, th there's a lot of them that just have better sets now. That's the unfortunate reality of it. Um, in this game, there are a lot of characters that use follow-up attacks. There are a lot of characters that use dots. You have your you have your um sustain units, right? And and they build different sets. Most of some other ones that have come out recently, uh, uh past the you know specific element sets and also there's um oh uh, what else oh and then you have like your harmony units which have kind of i kind of like the fact that harmony units all kind of use the same set if i'm being uh, most of them do uh there's there's kind of one exception and we're gonna get to that but for the fire set let's focus on this real quick uh i mean you know as we should uh, this is increasing your fire damage by 10%, another 12% after you use your alt, and also your, your skill damage is increased by 12% all the time. So, let's say you use your alt, and then the next turn you use your skill, okay? You, that skill is getting 34% more damage. Not incredible, but not nothing. Not nothing. I would say that this is probably ah uh, this is probably going to be on the same level as Band of Sizzling Thunder. Um The thing is, I think it's just a slightly better version of Sizzling Thunder. Uh for the Sizzling Thunder, it's it's funny because you could like kind of use the four piece with you know the four piece set is actually good for more than lightning. But the thing is, who is going to build it that isn't lightning, especially? Um, so I would say actually fire is probably one step above lightning because fire, this one just straight up gives you more damage. This is uh, your skill always has 22% more damage. You always have 10% more damage in general. And then you always have an extra 12% on whatever you're using next after you use your ultimate. So that that is just overall better, right? In in my opinion, right? Uh, so yeah, that's where I'm gonna put that. Uh, let's go to the Hunter of Glacial Forest set. This is the ice set. Increases your ice damage by ten percent. That's the two piece and the four piece. Is after the wearer uses their ultimate, their crit damage is increased by twenty five percent for two turns. The fact that this is for two turns is is decent, right? Because the damage buff on the fire thing is like, oh, for your next attack after you use your alt. Not even really for a turn. Um, and then the Band of Sizzling Thunder is for one turn you get the attack buff. This is actually a little better because you get your damage buff for two turns. That's not bad. Stipulation, of course, you have to use your ultimate or you're not getting anything. And then on top of that, um, the crit, 25% crit damage. It's decent, right? It's okay. It's not a lot. And I would actually say that this puts it below um the the slight damage increases of um the other two. Here's the thing though. I feel like there are characters that actually use this. Isn't that something? Uh that's the difference, which actually boosts this in value because that's how we're doing it. We're doing it by value. Uh, how valuable is it to farm the Glacial Forest set? Arguably not that valuable. However, it is valuable on certain characters. Like I said, who in their right mind, who is using a Lightning DPS, who has access to the follow-up attack set, to the dot set, and you have, you know, characters that are in the Lightning category, such as uh, Jing Yuan, uh, Kafka, those are pretty much the two big ones. Uh, Arlon is like the worst character in the game. Who is using Serval anymore? Um, Ting Yun is great, but, but she is not. 
she, she's a harmony character. She is not using the, the damage set. And Bayou is, well, she, okay, so she is using a damage set, but not this damage set. Um, and Bayou is, uh, arguably the worst healer in, no, 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 second worst healer in the game. So, yeah, Natasha's the worst, but, like, Bayou's above her, arguably. Some people say that Natasha's actually above her. But let's be honest, right? We went over that. Let, let's dunk on Lightning again, you know, for the sake of pushing up, you know, Glacial Fro uh, Forest. Who is using the Lightning set? I can give you two names that definitely can and will use the Ice set, and that is Jing Liu and Yan Ching unironically can use the lightning set herda wants the follow-up set misha is um well we're gonna pretend like that character doesn't exist but then again you could probably go that set um and be okay with it you could you could probably go the ice set Pela, you know she's an ability character she's using a different kind of set um mostly speed um but she can use the ice damage set she can if you want some damage ruan may that's that's a different set that's the speed set uh, March 7th in, in Japar, they want the defense set. So, um, we actually have like three characters that'll use this set. Now, I know I waffled on quite a bit about that, but I actually think that the ice set is one of the few that are good value. Okay. Let's go to arguably the best. I, actually, I don't think it's arguable. I, I don't. I don't. I think there's one that's maybe close, but to the element specific sets, I actually don't think that there's. There's a lot of um, question here at all. Uh, this is my, my money, the best element set in the game, and I think almost anybody would agree with it, and it's because of the four piece. Let's go over the two piece. Increase your quantum damage by 10%, and the four pieces, when the wearer deals damage to the target enemy, ignores 10% defense. If the target enemy has quantum weakness, the wearer additionally ignores 10% defense. Now, I don't know if you notice this, but it actually doesn't require you to deal quantum damage. It just requires whoever you're fighting to have quantum weakness. And you can still get the extra 10% and get the 20% defense. So ignoring 20% of defense is insane, right? Ignoring 10% defense, that's passable too. When the game first came out, most characters, unironically, most characters could put on this set most dps's in the entire game some of them would rather put on this set than their own element set just because of the four piece and the ignoring defense and they would actually have the damage increase now my qq has this set even though she's a follow-up character because she doesn't use her follow-up attack enough in my opinion to warrant equipping her with the follow-up attack set like that's not her whole business um, if they added a set that's like however many times you go in a turn or however many time or like when it's your turn to take action, if you go multiple times, you get like a damage boost or something, something similar to what Sparkle does or what, um, you know, basically a set that would basically just push QQ and Don Hong IL to the moon. Um, or they would release a set like you deal more damage based on how many skill points you're using something like that right unless they were to do that uh this set is not coming off my qq i think that this is unironically because it was good on pretty much every character every other character has kind of like found their own things that they can do the thing is that zila let's go open yeah uh zhuyi qq zila all the DPSs of the Quantum, pretty much all of them still use the set. Pretty much all of them. I think it's still probably their best set, unironically. Um, now, there's some like general sets like this one. You could use that for sure. But, I mean, yeah, when it comes to DPSs, if you're Quantum, you're using this. And if you're not Quantum, sometimes you're using this. That is how crazy this set is. At least back in the earlier days, you were still using this if you weren't quantum. Let's go to the next one. And I actually don't want to do this one. I'll... Oh, wait, no, no, no. We're... That is all for the element specific sets. That's actually it. That closes out our element specific sets. I'm pretty happy with where things have gone here. I think this accurately shows how powerful each set is. Um, 
let's move on to some of the more general stats. The Guard of Wuthering Snow. Oh, I don't know where this is supposed to be. No, wait, no. I don't know who this is made for. Okay? I can kind of get it if you want a character to be a little more tanky. But the problem is that there's a defense set. And then that also helps characters like uh, like some of the preservation characters increase the power of their shields, right? And that also just you know gives you defense in general, which re also reduces your damage taken, which is kind of what this set is trying to do. The two per the two pieces reduce damage taken by eight percent, and the four pieces at the beginning of the turn, if the wearer's HP is equal to or less than fifty percent, restores HP equal to eight percent of their max HP and regenerates five energy. That almost doesn't sound bad until you realize who is that supposed to who, who is this made for? Is this made for Blade? No, you want him to deal damage. Like you're, you're gonna put him in a different set. You're gonna put him in the follow up set. You're gonna well, okay, I wouldn't put him in the follow up set, but you're gonna put him in the HP set, right? Uh, it, it seems like the two characters, like the only two characters that could have ever used this, got their own set before this was even like. You could even moderately consider this an option, right? Blade, uh, he could benefit from the four piece for sure, and he would he does want to be tanky, sure, but he deals most of his damage based off of HP. So obviously building him HP that makes him tanky, um, and also building him you know HP increases his damage too. Uh, that is really good. Okay, um, and then we'll also you know get to the four piece that so we'll, we'll we'll dive deeper into that in the future. Um, whenever we get to it. But at the beginning of the turn, I mean, sorry, uh, QQ, no, Hushuan, Hushuan, sorry, uh, Hushuan is the only other character I could really see wanting this, and the thing is, um, she doesn't. <laughs> QQ is the only other character I could possibly see maybe wanting this, and she doesn't because she also wants the HP set. So both of the characters that could have possibly maybe got some use out of this. And even then, Blade, I feel like, would have just gone for, like, some different damage-dealing one. Because he is supposed to deal damage. He is supposed to be a DPS. He would have found a way, and I don't think it would have been this. But maybe Fushuan. Fushuan, I could see it 100%, actually. But, uh, Fushuan it also scales off of HP. A lot of, her, a lot of her stuff scales off of HP, and it's based off how much HP you have. And obviously, you don't want her to get one shot. You, you, she takes 80% of the damage from your entire team, right? And so you want her to have HP, right? So that she can live these big hits. You want her to have high HP. Uh, it doesn't matter if when she's below 50%, she restores HP equal to 8% of her max HP and regenerates 5 energy. Who cares about that? Her passive is literally when she gets low enough, she just heals herself, basically to full. It's crazy. This set is, for my money, worse than the win set. It is the worst set in the entire game. I don't know if any character will ever build this set. Ever. I don't know. They, this set, unironically, like, it has to be buffed or it may never, ever be used from the, from the release of the game. It was a set in release. I mean, it was a set that was introduced for the release of the game. It has never been good for any character from the release. Till now, we are in 2.0, hopefully entering 2.1 in like 20 days. Um, this set is bad. It is bad. You are not going to get any value out of going this set. Do not farm this set if you have the option to. And, and you know, I know that's rough because it's like this set and a good, good set. This set and like a half decent set. Like this set and a half decent set. You know what I mean? It's rough. It's rough. They put two sets. Usually one is usually better than the other. Uh, there's some exceptions, like the follow-up one is with the dot one. But the thing is, if you have dot, if you're, if you're going like a dot-focused account, you are not building the same characters that are really follow-up focused most of the time, right? Like, if you have an account that's Black Swan, uh, Kafka, Sampo, uh, Argenti, Luca, things like that, um, then you are, then you're not really building Blade, Topaz, Hemiko, uh, 
Jing Yuan, like, yeah, that's the, that's the thing with it. Uh, usually one set is useful for you, and usually one set isn't. Um, that's, you know, hard to come by things that aren't that case in the game right now. Uh, let's go for the Break Effect. Break Effect set, uh, Thief of Shooting Meteor. I actually consider this a pretty half okay overall DPS set. This is not the premier one. We're going to get to that next. Um, but two piece increased break effect by 16% and four piece increase the wearer's break effect by 16% and the wearer inflicts weakness break on enemy re regenerates 3% or 3 HP. Um, this is good on pretty much one character, but I actually use because I've, you know, got some of this while farming just in general, the game and the game, a, a lot of other things that you can do drops pieces of the break effect set and the uh the musketeer set damage set um so you do end up getting a decent amount of these and i actually had just a decent amount of ones with really good substats i built qq with this set before i ever put her in a quantum set and she actually slapped with this set on um and this was before ruan may came out so she wasn't even like comboing with the high amount of break effect that Ruan May gives your team. It wasn't even that. Um, it was just when she would break them, she's also a quantum unit, so the quantum break is really strong. You know, all that damage that they take once you get them to the five stacks and then they, like, take their turn. It's like, oh! Uh, this was dealing tons of damage. Tons of damage. Uh, but now there is a character that is arguably, uh, I think, for my money, the second best character in the entire game, Ruan Mei, and she is completely based off of break effect. You want her high speed, high break effect, and that's it. That's really all you want. You want to get her to at least 180 break effect and at least to a decent amount of speed, at least a 134. I mean, come on. You want almost every character a 134, depending on you know whether you're doing like specific builds. Like You can have a slow blade with a Bronya that boosts them up three times a turn. Uh, and, and then Blade's still getting a million turns while focusing all of his relics into, you know, making sure that he has high other stats like HP, crit rate, crit chance, things like that. Um, you know, there are a few exceptions, but uh, I mean, let's, let's not get too deep into that. Uh, I think that this set is actually a little bit higher value. Now, I would put it here. I would put it here, actually, uh, right above the ice set. Uh, there are a few characters that use the ice set. Hmm. I think just because there are like three characters that can legitimately use the ice set as their best or second best set, I. And it's not bad. I think that it's actually above the thief set, mostly because the thief set is like, it's really good on Ruan Mei. It is borderline serviceable on everyone else. Right, and being borderline serviceable on every character in the game is not bad. It's not the worst, but well, in, at least in every DPS in the game, um, it's not the worst, right? But I think I think this is good. I think this is good. Um, you know that that can be that can be um disputed in the comments for sure. Let's get on to the defense set. Uh, Knights for giving cask. So, or. Er, Knight of Purity, Alice. That said, increases defense by fifteen percent, and the four piece is increase the max damage that could be absorbed by the shield created by the wearer by twenty percent. This set is good. That's right. This set is good. I am legitimately saying it. I know that. Okay, so the I think the set is good. The characters that currently use it are weak. Unfortunately, right. We also we we run the possibility of when adventuring releases, they release a set that is re, that is just better for shielding characters, right? But until we know of that even happening, and until it does happen, I believe that this set is actually a good value set. Hear me out. Unless you are using the exact combination. Of Fu Xuan and then another abundance character, 
this set is 100% farmable. Um, sorry. And let me tell you who won. Uh, it, because it increases your defense, and then it also increases the max damage that can be absorbed by shields, you know, increases your shield strength by 20%. Um, and the, sh the characters I'm about to list, their shields that they give are based off of their defense. And that's pretty much all the shield characters that exist. It's March 7th, who is really good when you're first starting the game. Uh, she falls off later. You, you won't be using her once you, you know, have a certain amount of pulls. Uh, and once you level up a few other characters and, and get some decent sustain units. But early in the game, in, in, and in the, in the, in the mid-game too, good. Good character. March 7th is good. And you know what? I'm going to say it. I'm going to say it. So is Fire MC. Okay? No, I know that's actually... I, I said I'm going to say it. Like, it's some kind of controversial thing. People would actually say that that's better than March 7th. But, yeah. Uh, Fire MOC, March 7th, both really good in the early to mid game. Uh, before you have a lot of other, you know, some more stronger uh sustain units that's what that's what i'm looking for uh and also it is really good on japard okay japard is the big winner here because japard has the largest shields and he puts it on everybody and you know what adventuring coming out next patch he does the same thing guys i had a dream about it i had a dream adventuring had big shields on everybody. And you know what? He even did more damage because of it. Hmm. And, and maybe he dealt damage based off his defense. That's 100% possible. Like Blade and Ushuan with their HP scaling off of a defensive stat. That is really good. And you know what this gives? This, gi th this is arguably, right, when Adventuring comes out. Currently, it's the best set on like three different characters. And when Adventuring comes out, it's going to be the best set on four different characters. So that's all I'm saying, guys. I think that this set is good, right? I feel like nobody talks about it. Nobody cares. This set is good. I feel like 99% of people use a Fushuan and an Abundance character as like their two main sustain units, or they just use two Abundance characters like Huo Huo and um, Luocha, right? Uh, anyway, let's move on to the healing set. This is the healing set. This is the only healing set in the game still. Increases outgoing healing by 10% is the two piece. For the four piece at the start of the battle immediately regenerates one skill point. That four piece is whatever. Like one skill point, whatever. But not bad, right? I mean, that's obviously somewhat useful. And increasing the outgoing healing by 10% is good. It's good when you're healing. That is a good thing. This this piece uh, this set was arguably the best, um, okay, inarguably, before the the speed set came out, the number one set for anyone that healed, okay? It was the number one set for anybody that healed. And I would say, you know, it's it's probably number two now. I feel like most healers can get their healing from, you know, outgoing healing from, like, their other... I feel like most healers are just good, right? The healers in the game right now, they heal a lot. And they don't even need this set. They don't need an extra 10%. And the 10%, that's not even a lot. Uh, I feel like most healers are probably going the speed set. Um, or Luocha, who is going an attack-based set uh, because he heals based off of his attack. Um, yeah, that's the thing. That's the thing. I don't feel like this is great. It's still okay. I am going to put it here. I'm going to put it there. I think that that's good. I, I feel like there's, a, there's not a lot of like extremely low value. Oh, we did forget a element set. Uh, I feel like there's not a lot of extremely low value sets in the game. But the ones that are low value, you just want to watch out for it. And I feel like anything below good value, you guys will come to see in this video. I would simply avoid, right? I would avoid it 100%. So let's get on to uh, the 
unless I start being a little more strict and I move, you know, the fire and the lightning set down to meh value, but the physical set at the back and then start moving down some of the good value because I feel like, you know, I don't want to be too crazy with, you know, how top sided this is. I, I want to spread it out a little bit, give you guys a better idea of, you know, what is better than what, but left to right matters. Left to right matters. Remember that left to right matters. So if anything, yeah, you know, definitely like all the ones in good value right now, they're not equal. Uh, let's go to the Musketeer of Wild Wheat. In my opinion, one of the best sets in the game. I think it's one of the most timeless sets in the game. This set is, it's like, it's second or third best set on every single DPS in the game. Because what else are you going to use, right? You're going to use, if, you're, if it's a follow-up character, you're going to use, like, the follow-up set, most likely. And then it's going to be maybe your element set. And then it's going to be this one every time. Or, right after, you know, if it's, like, a follow-up character or follow-up DPS, right after this set, it's, or after that set, it's going to be this set, right? I feel like this is second or third best set on every character in the game. You are going to accrue a lot of these pieces because, like I said, you get musketeer pieces out the wazoo from all kinds of random stuff all the time in the game. Just like you get the thief set, right? These, those are the kind of the two sets. You're going to have a lot of half decent pieces of musketeer, the wild wheat. And there are some characters that work really well with this. This is just straight up increasing attack. Uh, not any specific element attack, just attack. So that is good for characters that scale off of attack. This is good for Luocha. I think I still use this set on Luocha because, you know, I've just accrued enough pieces and some of them had good substats. And on top of that, it synergizes with Luocha. It also gives him speed. Uh, you know, let me just read this real quick. Two piece uh, attack increased by 12%. Four piece, the wearer's speed increases by 6% and basic attack damage increases by 10%. Everyone uses basic attacks, okay? You know who uses basic attacks quite a bit? Don Hong Ael. Uh, QQ, obviously, this isn't either of their best set, but it's there. If you have a lot of good pieces, you have got a lot of good subs, you have a lot of good pieces with good substats, this is a hundred percent serviceable. And also, this might be one of the most um two and two sets out there because just having 12% more attack is good on any DPS. So if you're going for a budget, you don't, you know, you want to prioritize stats, but you want to get a little bit of a set bonus. Uh, you can go two piece of this with two piece of any of the specific uh, element ones. And then you get like 12% increased attack from Musketeer of the Wild Wheat. And then you also get 10% increased ice damage, something like that. That's good. That is decent. That's 100% decent. You get a lot of attack off of that. or You get a lot of damage out of that. Um, this piece is just good. And the fact that it gives you speed with the four piece, this is just good. And you you accrue a lot of them. It's very general. It is very good. You get insane value. I would say more than the quantum set. I would. I would 100%. Because quantum set, I feel like it used to be like one of the best sets on everybody. Now everybody kind of has like their set that they want. Um, but quantum set is still really good. So it's obviously, you know, people who it's even more valuable for, the quantum characters. Uh, it is still incredible for them. But I feel like Musketeer of the Wild Wheat is very, very good in general. It's just a very, very good general piece. Uh, let's go for the Wastelander of Banditry Desert. Uh, Desert. Uh, this is the Imaginary set. Increases your Imaginary damage by 10% at 2-piece and at 4-piece. When attacking debuffed energy enemies, the wearer's crit rate increases by 10% and their crit damage increases by 12% against imprisoned enemies. Oof. That's a lot. Okay. So when you're attacking someone with a debuff, you get more crit rate. Uh, when you're attacking someone who's imprisoned, which is also considered a debuff, um, you get more crit damage. That is good. That's a lot of damage. Increase imaginary damage by 10%. That's a, that's decent. That, I mean, that's what every uh, element is. Um, I think that this is actually a really good set. I think that this is probably uh, the, the best element set that isn't quantum, okay? 
I think it is better than the Glacial Forest set because it's only giving you 5% more crit damage. But it's not giving you any crit rate. And it's only after you use your ultimate, you know, for, for the two turns after. Um, of course, you could be using your ultimate every two turns. That's not completely, that, that's not ridiculous at all. Especially if you have like a regen, an energy regen rope or you have low energy on your character, but something like that. Like, I think that this is really good. I think, I think that this is right where I just put it. I think that this is good. Okay. Yeah, I think that this is good. Um, yeah. Let's go for the HP set. The HP set, two piece increases max HP by 12%. This is Longevu Disciple. Yeah, we're gonna. Yeah, that. I messed that up 100%, but who cares? Four piece, when the wearer is hit or has their HP consumed by an ally or themselves, their crit rate increases by 8% for two turns and up to two stacks. So, this set was made for blade okay it increases his max hp he scales off his max hp when they're hit or has their hp consumed by an ally or themselves so basically when you lose hp from pretty much any source i don't know why they didn't just write that um i don't i don't really want to try and brainstorm what the you know stipulations are like what this doesn't include but if anything uh, it also increases his crit, uh, the crit rate by 8%, so that can go up to 16% because, you know, 16% for two turns because it has two stacks. Uh, this set was made for Blade. And you know what? It's really good. It's really good. It's really good. And you know who else it's really good for? Fushuan. This set is really good for Fushuan because she also scales off of uh, max HP. And on top of that, um, you know, the crit rate, that doesn't matter as much, but she does in fact benefit from it a little bit. Her ultimate can kind of slap. I, I must say, her ultimate can slap, and mine definitely does sometimes. At least for like uh, a sustain unit, it definitely slaps. Um, yeah, and she's always getting her HP consumed because when anybody on your team is attacked, she takes a sliver of the damage. Um, she takes a little bit of it. Well, most of it actually, but yeah, the set's good. The set is good. Arguably, actually, a little worse than ice because ice. I said you could probably use pretty well on three people. This one's on four people, but I just feel like it is so much stronger for the people that it is used on, and for the ice people that or for the ice characters that use this. I mean, you can use the musketeer set and you'll be fine there. You can even use the quantum set. Yo. You'll be okay. Um, I think I might actually move this up one because, oh, sorry. I think I might actually move this above the ice one because here's the thing. Here's the thing. The characters that use this would be miserable with just about anything else. All right. Blade and Fushuan, if you just randomly patch the set out of the game, they would be like, oh my God, that is a huge hit. To me as a character. That is a huge hit. Um, I just don't think it's as much of a hit for like the Hunter of the Glacial Forest characters to use uh Musketeer of the Wild Wheat. Okay, I, I don't think it's as much of a hit or to get the uh defense ignorers, things like that. Okay. Now, I mean you can eat me up in the comments about that. If anybody wants to ride or die for ice, I could see it. I could see it. Um at least over uh longevity disciple but i'm not i'm not buying it this is spoiler alert the best set in the entire game this is it this is the best set you know why because speed is important uh, it increases your speed by six percent that's the two piece and the four pieces when the wearer uses their ultimate on an ally Speed for all allies is increased by 12% for one turn. Uh, so, your speed is always, you know, a 6% increase. Uh, when you use your ultimate at all, as long as it's not a damage ultimate, because you have to use it on an ally of sorts, 
even if it's you know yourself. Like so, Bronya, Ruan May, uh, Asta. This one actually. Hmm. Yeah, yeah. So pretty much any harmony character. I haven't used Hanya. Okay. I just got her. I could swear her alt deals damage. Is that true? Oh my god, man. I hate that you can't just like... It's annoying. You can't read their abilities there. Unless I'm just not finding it. Ultimate? Oh. Okay. Okay. Oh, yeah, she's the one with the skill that deals the attack. That Okay, she has the skill that attacks, just like Asta. But, I mean, let, let's just, like, go over the characters that can be used on, right? It can be used on legitimately. It can be a good two-piecer on any single character in the entire game. Everyone likes speed. Pretty much everybody wants to at least break the 134 speed uh, barrier um, to go two times every few turns um, and end on the first turn. Um, yeah, I mean, every DPS kind of wants it, uh, could, could use it. I mean, uh, every sub DPS, the Hillity characters could definitely use every single character in the game, right? Uh, it is the best set I would say on Sparkle, the second best set on Ruan May, uh, the best set on Baronia is the best set on Tingyun. It actually used to be this one, but or it used to be Musketeer of the Wild Wheat. But now my 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 orbs for her are completely messed up. My relics for just ignore Tingyun's relics, guys. But like like I purposely moved all these around because I've been stripping her and putting other things on other characters. But it is probably the best set on Ting Yun. I feel like before it came out, it was Musketeer so that she would, you know, have a more attack boost because she boosts attack based off of her attack. Um, and Luocha heals based off his attack, which, you know, why I was talking about the Musketeer of the Wild Wheat set. See, so I have the 2-2 two, two on him for the increased outgoing healing and the attack increase. Um, it's obviously Asta's best set. It, it, I mean, like, do we really have to go over it? It is... I think it's Yukong's best set. I'm I think. Um guys, this set is crazy. This set is best for every harmony character. So this is what I just wanted to say. This is the set is the best set for every harmony character in the entire game except for Ruan Mei. And for Ruan Mei, it is the second best. It is serviceable. Thank you. It is serviceable. Even as a four piece on, okay, not really, but it is serviceable as a two piece with any other two piece set on pretty much every character in the game. It is my take best relic set in the game. Straight up, best in the game. Let's move to the dot piece or the dot set prisoner, prisoner in deep confinement. This one is another attack increases by 12%, very general, just like um, Musketeer of the Wild Wheat. So you could definitely do a two-piecer of this and two-piece of something else. If you were planning on doing that with Musketeer of the Wild Wheat, it's, um, it's actually pretty good in that way. Um, so it's a good two-piecer for almost any DPS in the entire game. But the people that really want to build it, Sampo, uh, these people want to four-piece it because for every dot the target enemy is afflicted with, the wearer will ignore 6% of its defense when dealing damage to it. This effect is valid for a max of 3 dots. So, uh, this, this just makes your dots ignore uh, 6% of the defense, right? Yeah, I, I worded that wrong. I, I worded that in a way. But, I mean, yeah, that's, that's what it does. You ignore defense. Based on the dots that you put down. Um, so that's really good for dot characters. And dot characters being... I already listed them out. Uh, Black Swan. Uh, Kafka. Sampo. 
Serval, Luca, uh, Argenti. They can all be used to put dots. Did I say Sampo? Gwenaifin. Um, yeah. They all, pretty much all of them, can work really well with the set. Uh, this set is definitely high value. Problem is, right? Ignore this completely. So this set is here. If you have a lot of uh, dots on dot characters on your uh, account, this set is here. Worse, no, not worst actually, because of the two piece. I would say it's here. If you maybe even here, maybe even here because of the two piece. Uh, or you know, if you don't have any dot piece, but if you do, it's here. And I'm going to assume if you're building this, you have dot characters. So I would put it here. Right. Uh, obviously, like, yeah, yeah, I, I feel like I should be able to say this. Ignore this completely. Ignore where this is if you have no dot characters on your account. Please. Please. This is a really good set, but only if you have dot characters. And let me just put it up there. I think that this set might be actually a little better. Um, but this set is for follow up characters. So. The Ash Blazing Grand Duke, Grand Duke increases the damage dealt by follow-up attacks by 20%. That's, that's a lot. Uh, four piece. When the wearer uses follow-up attacks, increase the wearer's attack by 6% for every time the follow-up attack deals damage. This effect can stack up to eight times and last for three turns. Eight times, three turns. This effect is removed the next time the wearer uses a follow-up attack. Guys. When Jing Yuan's Lightning Lord comes down with the 10 stacks, right? And deals damage 10 different instances. Or even 8 different instances. Maybe it's not fully stacked. Maybe it's one away from fully stacked and it has 8. So it deals 8 different instances. Let me just pull out the little calculator here. Let me pull out the calculator here. So increases the wearer's attack by 6%. Okay. 6%. 6 times 8. 48%. More attack for your character. Or it can last up to 3 turns. Or until you use the next follow-up attack. Which at that point, the follow up attack will just reset it. Right? Jing Yuan gets so much benefit out of this. Some don't get as much. Like Blade only, you know, he, he does his one AoE attack. It's just one number. But if it hits, like, you know, say five people on the battlefield, that's whenever he can get it. It's like max value. And you stack it five times. So six times five. That's an absolute max value. You get 30%. It's not as much. Jing Yuan absolutely smurfs with this set. This set was almost, it's like it was made for him, but it came out way later than him. Still, right, there are a lot of follow-up attack characters in the game. There are more follow-up attack-based characters in the game than there are um, dot characters. And also, I believe this set is just better for follow-up characters than the dot set is for dot characters. I think it's just ridiculous ridiculous how insanely broken the set is um that's why i'm going to put it right above the dot obviously if you don't have a lot of dot characters like i said for the uh or sorry if you don't have a lot of follow-up characters just like you don't have a lot of dot just like if you don't have a lot of dot characters ignore where this is placed and put it somewhere especially for this one you know this one is like it has the good two-piecer that is useful on most people on, on just about any DPS because it's a general 12% attack damage buff. This one can still say stay in good value, like at the end of good value or at the top of decent value. Uh, this set, it's higher, in my opinion, higher high than the dot set, but a lower low than like, it, it's like at the bottom of the tier. It's like literally last place if you don't have any character that can synergize with follow-up attacks, obviously. Oh my god, we're going to have to speed this up. My voice is dying. I don't know if you guys have been able to tell. I'm also running out of breath very fast. Get this done. Let's get this done. 
Um, let me just give you my thoughts on two other sets. These sets are brand new. Uh, this tier list clearly wasn't updated with those. I, I didn't even realize that before I started the video. I'm really sorry. Um, this set increased damage to allies with debuff by 12%. Uh, increases crit rate by 4%. The wear deals 8 to 12% increased crit damage to enemies with at least 2 to 3 debuffs. After the wear inflicts a debuff on enemy targets, the aforementioned effects increase by 100% lasting one turn. Whew. This is a lot of crit rate and crit damage to characters who have debuffs on them. This set will improve in value with Acheron coming out. This set is really good if you have, say, Pale on your team. This set, I think, if if you had a Jing Liu and you only used her with Pela, I think that this set is actually good for her. I think it's not bad at all. This set was obviously meant for uh, Veritas uh, Dr. Ratio. Um, yeah, this set is really good, but I would say you have to have a Nihility character on your team um, for this set to really get all of it, you know, it, it's big value. Or, yeah, no, that's it. That's it. You, you definitely need someone to debuff for this to get value. So I would probably put it end of good value. No, actually top of decent value. Top of decent value, when Acheron comes out and sh if she becomes like the most pulled for unit in Honkai Star Rail, then arguably you could say most people who play the game actively have Acheron. Therefore, its value goes to like here because you could put Acheron like between this set and this set because like you could put like Acheron in most people could put Acheron in a team and then like get the most value out of this set. Um, obviously Acheron and Dr. Ratio are going to be incredible. I'm so, so, so excited. For a Nihility character to finally come out that isn't hell bent on um, demon damage over time. Sorry, um, Silver Wolf, Welt. Okay, well, actually, if you have Welt, this is good. And Silver Wolf. Yeah. Okay. Okay, but like I would say, like best currently best paired. If you put it on like Dr. Ratio and you have a Welt on your team, right? Or if you have a Jing Liu and you're only playing with your Pela, something like that, something along those lines. Um, but when Akron comes out, finally we will have like a really good five star that is all about their debuffs instead of basically being a DPS character that is a dot character like Sampo, Black Swan, Kafka, Gwenaifin, and Luca. I don't mind it. It's I just thought it was like, and I think that there's like, <laughs> there's more follow-up characters than dot characters. So arguably we do need more dot characters, but I feel like, I don't know. Nihility just feels like the dot thing right now. It doesn't feel like the debuffer thing right now. Okay. So hopefully Akron is going to vibe check the Nihility uh, class. Oh. Let's get in to Watchmaker Master of Dream Machinations. Increased break effect by 16%. When the wearer uses their ultimate on an ally, all allies' break effect increases by 30% for two turns. This effect cannot be stacked. This set was basically made for Ruan Mei. Um, I think, I'm going to be honest here. Okay. I think that it is better than Thief right because it's usually not ruan may herself who is directly inflicting the weakness break on the enemy so she's not really getting a benefit from the from that and getting the three energy which is a really low number anyway um and this is just this is what this is 32 break effect so if you have the four piece that's 32 break effect let's go to this piece um this is only 16, but it, it goes up to 46 whenever you use your ult. All right, so whenever you use your ultimate, uh, in general, as long as it's not a damage-dealing ultimate, it, it applies to your allies, which is what Ruan Mei's ult does. 
increases hers and all of the other allies uh, by 30% for two turns. Um, and I would say my Ruan Mei uses her ult pretty often. This will probably up Perma. Um, I would say that this is argue this now this is probably inarguably better than the thief set. The thing is, I feel like the thief set is so unbelievably serviceable compared to this that that why would you not? I feel like this is a very large undertaking to farm an entire set and then you know just for the purpose of trying to get it to replace one set on one character i feel like that is not worth it at all um on top of that like i said like three times this video you get the thief set handed out by like 80 different things like 80 different pieces of content obviously that's like you know that's, that's some exaggeration but all kinds of stuff you open a chest you get a thief set or a musketeer set you you do you do this you do that you you farm for it directly you can do that too like you just get so many of these pieces you're bound to get ones with really good sub stats just through playing throughout the whole game unless you're extremely unlucky and then if so you can just like farm the last piece or so that you need um that maybe you didn't get lucky on from other aspects of the game and, and you can farm that yourself i just feel like there is such a higher likelihood that you're going to have good sub stats for this but yes, in terms of relic set strength, straight up, the other one is better. So I would just put it one step above this one because you're only farming it to replace one set off of one specific character, not using it on anybody else. Okay, let's go. The one we are missing, by the way, is uh, this one here. And we will get to that one. We'll, we'll do it last. Okay. Uh, it's because I've literally never picked it up. It's on like world three. I, I've actually unironically done this world so little times. Because I think that the, the sets are just so. Probably not great. Um, or useful in my opinion. Um, let's get to it. Bellabog of the Architects this is our first one. Increases the wearer's defense by 15%. When the wearer's effect rate hits 50% or higher, the wearer gains an extra 15% defense. Oh man, I don't like this. I think that this is good on Japard and Japard. I, I'm putting this here because 30% defense on Japard, <clears throat> that's good. You increase his heals. And you want the effect hit, the effect hit rate is good because then they can resist your frozen less. Okay. This is also probably good on, on March 7th. But that's it. This, it's not like it's going to be, it's not like it's going to be um, similar to this set where it's also good on adventuring when he comes out. It's not going to be. <clears throat> okay. M maybe it will. Maybe it will actually. Because effect hit rate and you, you, you know, and you imprison them, but the, the imprison, unless he directly has an ability that can put imprison on them, even when they're not broken, you're only doing it through the break, right? So you're going to get it anyway. So, all right, guys. Yeah. I mean, this is where I'm putting it. This is where I'm putting it. That could be argued. Maybe. Maybe. Uh, let's go to the next one. Celestial differentiator. Increase the wearer's crit damage by 16%. When the wearer's current crit damage reaches 120% or higher. Oh, that's very easy to do on DPSs, at least if you're going, um, even when you're not, but especially if you do decide to go the crit damage uh, chest, it's like, how in the world are you not getting that? How in the world are you not doing that? After entering battle, the wearer's crit rate increases by 60% until the end of their first attack. Ah, this is not good. This is not good. I have not seen one character use this. Um, I don't like it at all. So it gives you more crit damage, right? Okay. Crit damage is easy to get a lot of. It is not hard at all to reach like 150 to 160 plus crit damage on every DPS in the game. It is not hard at all. Right? It's actually really easy. Um, you got to get a little bit of luck 
And you gotta have a crit damage chest, right? It's easy, guys. Okay. Um and then whenever you so you get it to like this 120%, which is really easy to get as well. And that, that's okay. It's good to have easy to get like stipulations. But what's the reward for that? When you enter battle, the wearer's crit rate increases by 60% to the end of their first attack. They get one crit. What are we saying? So basically the buff is that they increase their crit rate to like a hundred percent for one attack. So they get one crit. That that is the whole set. I'm gonna do one crit. What are we saying? What are we saying? This is I'm gonna put I, I, guys. I'm gonna put it under this. I would rather take 8% reduced damage than have an entire planner set in, like, based off of, like, planner ornaments based off of me critting one time. Oh my god, that is awful. Please get me into a good one. Thank you. This one is really good on a lot of supports. Let's read it. Two piece. Increase the wearer's max HP by 12%. Really good for Fushuan, right? Obviously. Uh, when the wearer's speed reaches 120 or higher, so. You you definitely want most characters to be above that, um, or if not all characters, to be at least 134 so that they can go twice uh, at the start and then every two turns after. Um, all allies attack increases by 8%. Oh, this is finally, finally we're in a good set. This is, this is not bad. This is not a bad set at all. Um. I like this set. This set is useful on a lot of characters. A, a lot of supports, they are happy with max HP. Every character that you're utilizing should have a, above 120 speed. Yeah, they should. And if yours don't, that is a problem. That is a problem. Unless there's a specific reason for that. A specific like comp-based reason for that. Um, and then it increases your whole your your whole team's attack by eight percent. Um. That is just generally nice, you know. You get more HP as a support. You don't get one shot. If you know you do get targeted, um, it makes your tanks tankier, Bushwan, uh, and increases your your teammates' attack by eight percent. So you just also buff your DPSs and you know the rest of your team in general. This is a good set. Finally, this is a set used on a lot of characters. I'm gonna put this here in the value chart. All right. Next one is Sprightly Von Walk. Increases the wearer's energy regeneration rate by 5%. When the wearer's speed reaches 120 or higher, the wearer's action is advanced by 40% immediately upon entering battle. This, I would say, is not a good set, except, right, energy regeneration, really good. Obviously, like, even 5% is really good. There's another set that also gives 5%. Okay, it's all right. We'll, we'll talk about that. Um, I haven't even seen if, if it's on like the. Um, <clears throat> I don't know, man. Th this set is used by theory crafters. Uh, I, I've really only seen it used by theory crafters to do very specific things. Very specific things. I don't think that the set is very good. I think it's here on the value chart. Right? I think it's there. Next up is going to be Inert Salsado. That is going to be the two-piece increase the wearer's crit rate by 8%. When the wearer's current crit rate reaches 50% or higher, the wearer's ultimate and follow-up attack damage increases by 15%. So, this is a good set. This is what a good set looks like. You, you increase your crit rate by 8%, helps you get towards your 50% mark that, you, that you're trying to reach to activate the set's effect and what the effects of the set are is that your ultimate and follow-up attack damage increases by 15% which is just overall good if you're a character that relies on your follow-up attack <clears throat> Jing Yuan, uh, Himiko, uh, Herda and you also you rely heavily on 99% sorry like 90% of your damage is in your 
Or something like 80% of your damage is in your follow-up attack. 10% is in your alt. Or 15% is in your alt. 5% is in everything else. This is a really good set. This is a good set for, you know, like I said, it, it's really good for Jing Yuan. It's good for Himiko. It's good for, good for Clara too. Clara can benefit off of this. Um, except, unfortunately, she doesn't deal damage with her alt. But it does empower her follow-up attacks or counterattacks. Um, this is decent for Blade. Uh, this is decent for Herda. This is decent for... You could use it for QQ, uh, for sure. Um, yeah. This is a good set. This is a good set. This is what a good set looks like. I think that this set is also really high value. Um, if you're running, I'm going to assume if you're building it, you're running follow-up attacks, running follow-up characters. This is where it's going to be put if you're running follow-up characters. If you're not, why are you even moderately considering this? Um, obviously, it is not going to be where it is if you're putting it in, if you're building it in the absolute, you know, on, on the worst character you could possibly build it with, with literally no synergy. This one has increased the wearer's attack by 12%. When the wearer's speed reaches 100% or higher, it should be, the wearer's attack increases by an extra 12%. <laughs> this is just straight up if you're building your character with enough speed well with like a decent bit less 14 less than i would say the the most common speed benchmark in the entire game unless you're randomly building it lower than that um this is just the set is literally just okay yeah you deal 24 percent more damage this is the you deal 24 percent more damage set that's literally it. It is very general. I would say it's like the, uh, very similar to Musketeer of the Wild Wheat. It doesn't have any specific uses. It's just deal more damage. And that's good. That's good. That is very useful. I'm going to put it right there. Okay. I'm going to put it right there. Um, I, I think obviously it is above this, right? And it's, you know, and it's also above this if you're not building follow up, but, you know, I'm going to stop reiterating that, or I'm going to try to stop reiterating that. It's just common sense. This one. Increase the wearer's break effect by 16% when the wearer's speed reaches 145 or higher. Uh, or higher, The wearer's break effect increases by an extra 20%. This is the set that I have on my Ruan Mei. I don't think I would ever build this set on any other character. I'm going to put it right here at the end of good value because Ruan Mei is a great character. I'm going to put it right here. Um, no, 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 no. I actually think that the planner or there, if you're building this, like this can be built generally. Like I said, this can be built generally. Uh, this really can't. This is really just, it's, it's Ruan May. Okay. It's Ruan May. That's it. Uh, so I'm going to put it here. If you, if you're building it on Ruan May, it's higher, but just overall, if you're not, then why, right, why are you? What are we doing here? Uh, okay, that one. Rudolin Arena. Rudolin Arena is also very good. Increase your crit rate by 8%. When the wearer's current crit rate reaches 70% or higher, this is just inert sauce auto, but harder uh, to get to. Wears basic attack and skill damage increased by 20%. This is basically the, the best one in the game for actually a decent amount of characters. But the ones that use the basic attacks the most. The, so we're talking about this is pretty good on Blade. This is pretty good on Blade if you're not using Inert Salsado. I think this is actually, by the numbers, better for Blade. Um, maybe. Because you are basic attacking so much. And your skill just improves your basic attack. Maybe this is better than Blade. Um, I assume if you're building it and you're trying to get to the 70% crit rate, you're also having 20% more crit rate. Um, but that's not as effective the set. It's just more like in order to take advantage of the set, you would have twenty percent market rate. Um, yeah, this is the best set in the game for Don Hong Il and QQ, and it works really well on Blade and then a few other characters. It is generally good too. Um, I would say just not as generally good uh, because you know a lot of characters also focus on their skills. Um, Jing Liu is one of them. She doesn't use follow-up attacks, so uh, she is not using Inert Salsado, but 
<clears throat> she can very much take advantage of this one because she's always using her skill. She's based off her skill. All right. Broken keel. Increase the wearer's effect resist by 10% when the wearer's effect resist is at 30% or higher. All allies crit damage increases by 10%. This is actually one of the best sets on Sparkle because of the uh, bonus crit damage on other people. And I have seen it literally nowhere else. That's it. I've seen it literally nowhere else. Um, I'm sure you could use it on Bronya. But yeah. Because they're so similar and they do the same thing. And the same reason you would be building this on Sparkles, why, you're, why, why you would build it on Bronya. Uh, you're less likely to get, if you're reading, reaching the 30% benchmark plus the 10% that it gives you, you're not going to get affected by things. Like you're, you're less likely to get frozen. You can resist that. Uh, or dominated, you can resist that. And then you buff yourself and all your allies. Crit damage by 10%, that is good. But it's not good on a lot of people. So I'm going to put it here. I'm going to put it here. Very middle of the line uh, planner sets. And then there's some really good ones. <coughs> Panacani, Land of Dreams. This is the other one that increases the wearer's energy regeneration rate by 5%. And it also increases damage by 10% for your other allies that are of the same type as the wearer. This is good in one single situation. If you are building a team of, uh, if you are building a mono element team, there are not really avenues for you to do that in the game yet, right? There are okay ones. For sure. Let's go over the two that I think are the best. Mono Wind. Why have not a lot of people been talking about Mono Wind, by the way? Oh, I know why. Because you have your Sustainer, you have your Harmony, and then you have your, uh, your DPS, which is you know works really well with Bronya and Huoho. But then who do you use? Sampo, Don Hung, or Black Swan? That doesn't make no sense at all, mate. Now, if Jing Liu was here, if Jing Liu was somehow wind and shot like, I don't know, gusts of wind instead of ice, Mono Wind would be ridiculous. One of the best teams in the entire game, bar none, maybe even slightly better than Mono Quantum. Probably not, though, now that Zealot, uh, uh, Sparkle's been added. Uh, but you have. I used to do Mono Lightning. <laughs> it's not good. Uh, well, almost Mono Lightning. I would go Bayou, uh, Tingyun, uh, Jingyuan. I think this team might actually be doable once, uh, once Akron comes out. It actually seems doable. Jingyuan, Akron, Tingyun, and Bayou. We will have all four of those characters, and I might actually make a video of doing it. Uh, of me doing it. So we can go Mono Lightning when uh, Akron comes out. Other than that, man, like, you can go Mono Ice. Jing Liu, Pela, Ruan, Mei, and Japard. That's okay. Um, the most popular one is very obvious. Uh, it's Quantum. You can go Mono Quantum. You go Zilla or QQ. And then you go Silver Wolf, Ushuan, and Sparkle. This one's definitely the best because it has Silver Wolf who can put the Quantum Weakness on anybody. So you can effectively use Mono Quantum on any single enemy in the entire game 100% because it doesn't matter who they are. It doesn't matter what their weakness is. Silver Wolf can put the Quantum Weakness on them. It's definitely the best, right? It's not like Mono Imaginary or Mono Wind or Mono Ice or Mono Lightning where you would have to... Okay, well, yeah, Mono Lightning, Ice, or Imaginary, which are the only ones that are really viable, at least Lightning after Akron comes out. Um, imaginary would be like Imbibitor IL or Doctor Ratio, and then Welt, Yukong, and Luocha or Adventuring when Adventuring comes out. That's another possible sustainer. Um, yeah. Uh, with that one, with either of those, you would have to actually use it on someone with the same weakness type as you. Um, less likely Ice because Ruan May has the you know. Uh, Defense shred for people that, you know, when you're against someone that doesn't have your element that you're weak to. Uh, that one's like okay, but Silver Wolf, 
um, makes it so that you just are hitting the quantum weakness on any enemy in the entire game. Then we we waffled about that a lot. Um, I just don't think that this is good. I think that you know this has like one use. This is one use. The energy regen is nice. But you're kind of, when you equip this to a character, right, unless you want to de-equip and re-equip every single time you want to do something different, every time you want to put Sparkle in a different team, you take this out. Every time you want to put her back in a mono quantum team, you put it back in. It's like, unless you're doing that because you're a madman, you put, slapping this on Sparkle is pretty useless in any situation other than when you are using that mono quantum team. For that reason, I'm going to put this really low because I just don't think it has a lot of value. Um, <clears throat> especially if you don't have a lot of characters and you just straight up don't have the pieces. This is good. It requires you to have a lot more speed than the other one. The other one requires you to have 120 speed. This one is 135 or 160. And then you can get the 24% damage. So... This is just straight up worse than the other one because, uh, well, until you get to the 18%, because the other one is increase the wear's attack by 12%, and then another 12% if you have 120 speed. This one requires you to get 135 speed before you get the other 12%. So why the hell do you, like, why do you want this if you're just doing the first one? By the way, so you're going for 160. That's what you want to get to. And then I guess it gives you 6% more damage. Is that really worth it? I guess if you're already putting that much into speed, it's worth it. I don't think this is great. I don't think this is that great. I think you'd rather just use this. But I will put it here because it's the same thing, except I feel like it just has harder values to meet. But really, overall, it is the same thing. It it its highs are higher but its low is literally lower you need you know like i said if you're going for a character you will try to get it to 134 speed this requires 135 and you get the bonus so if you're building like i said oh you're gonna get it but yeah i mean it's just, it's just like you get the same benefit but you have to hit a higher bar okay now for the relic, I literally don't have seen that I haven't found yet. Let me just read it off of here. It's in World 5. I don't know how I've never found... Okay, yeah, I've barely done any World 5. This is this one. This is awful. The worst one in the entire game? Yep. Yep, and then it has this. Which is, increase the wire's effect hit rate, so you can, like, your freezes will have a less chance of being uh, resisted, things like that. When the wearer's attack increases by an amount that is equal to 25 of the current effect hit rate. Wait, what? Mean, meanwhile, the wearer's attack increases by an amount that is equal to 25% of the current effect hit rate, up to a maximum of 25%. So if you have a 100% effect hit rate, you can get a maximum of 25% bonus attack damage. 25% bonus damage is good, but this is all about your hit rate. On, whenever you're thinking about what characters would use this, it's pretty much an ice character or maybe Welt. You know, characters that want to deal damage, but they also want to apply a freeze or something like that. Um, it'd be like March 7th, Japard, Welt. Guys, this isn't good. Or Pela, or maybe Akron when she comes out. This isn't good. This isn't good. Maybe Akron will use this. Maybe. Very low chance. Very low chance, in my opinion. I think that this is really bad. I would put this here. I'd put this here. I think it is probably better than these three things, but I'm putting it there. Finally, I can <clears throat> calm down. My throat hurts really bad. I've been talking nonstop for an hour and 20 minutes. I was not ready for this. I'm really not doing great. Um, thank you all for watching. I really appreciate it. Um, this is the end of my tier list. Um, if you disagree, put that in the comments. If you agree, also put that in the comments. I would like to hear if I did a good job or you believe I did a bad job. But anyways, like the video, subscribe, 
if you like this kind of content and you want to see some you want to see some in the future i also do character tier lists every single patch um i might update this in the future there's a possibility it took me a long time because it's the first time i've ever done it and there's a lot of sets in the game um i could i should have separated it between two different videos with like you know the planner sets and then like the regular sets but we did it all one go in at you know, in 2.0, when multiple relic sets have been added past launch. Holy. Um, thank you all for watching. I, I really do appreciate it, and I'll see you guys in the next one.